Hello, everyone. Welcome to Huddle Up. This is our second Huddle Up. Uh, last week, if you joined in then, uh, you would have saw a, a great conversation uh, centering around athletics as well as Christ. Um, we want to welcome you back for another 30 to 35 minutes of the same, wherever you are, uh, domestically, internationally. Thank you for taking time out of your day to sit down with us uh, and have this conversation. We uh, are in unprecedented times, as we all know. Uh, many of us are sitting in our homes right now, maybe on your phone, maybe you haven't left the house in two weeks, I don't know, like, like we have. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, we believe now is a time uh, for us really to, to, to get together, to encourage each other, and to really feed off of each other's experiences, and most importantly, um, to share the love of Christ with each other. So just like last week, we had three special guests uh, with me today. Um, in a collaboration with Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Pro Athlete Outreach, we have got uh, these three people, wonderful people, who are going to share with you uh, today. The first I'll introduce, uh, he is a, a friend of mine, a teammate of mine last year. And this guy, uh, I call him the Pineapple Man, and he's going to laugh. But the reason why I call him the Pineapple Man is because back in the day, whenever you went to a Pro Bowl, they put a little pineapple by your name because the Pro Bowl was always in Hawaii. And this guy has been to eight Pro Bowls, going on 9, 10, 11, whatever he wants to do. He's won three Super Bowl championships. Uh, he's going into his, I believe, 13th year in the NFL. Um, he's a father, he's a husband, all those things. But he's an incredible leader uh, for the Patriots, not only for the Patriots, but for the, the league in general. He is what I like to call a uh, leader of men. And his name is uh, Matthew Slater. He's a special teams player, wide receiver. He does it all. Matthew Slater is joining us. Uh, Matthew, you want to say hello to everybody? Thank you, Benjamin, for the uh, warm introduction there. I'll have to, I'll have to tip you for that later. But uh, it's really a, a pleasure to be with you guys today. Um, such a blessing. I look forward to our conversation, and thanks for having me. Definitely, definitely. Um, the next guy, uh, he and his wife have served kind of as as mentors, I would say, for us. And the first thing I noticed about him was uh, really his his heart for. The vulnerable. He and his wife do a lot of work when it comes to uh, protecting those from sex trafficking and just really getting involved with um, protecting those who can't protect themselves in a lot of ways. And it's all because of his love for the Lord. His name is Matthew Hasselbeck. You may know him from uh, Saturday Night NFL Countdown. I know him from playing across from him and being in the, in the league with him at the same time. Uh, he was drafted in 1998 by the Green Bay Packers and he played on several different teams. Um, he is a quarterback, which means he is a leader, as we all know. Uh, Matthew Hasselbeck, uh, welcome to the show. You want to say hello? Be here. Uh, Steve Stenstrom, Ben Watson told me about this thing, and uh, I thought, what a great idea. I actually tuned in last week and saw Luke McCown and Adam Wainwright and Ben and everybody just talking. So uh, I'm excited to be here also. And Matthew Slater, that's really good company. <laughs> Now, our most uh, important guest um, is a young lady named Gigi Marvin. Now, I don't know much about ice hockey. Honestly, I grew up in the South, and now that I live in Boston, it's like everybody plays this ice hockey thing, and I had no idea what it was. So she is a professional ice hockey player, but more importantly than that, uh, she's a believer. Most importantly than that is the fact that she is an Olympian. This woman has won a gold medal, has won two silver gold medals. She's currently with the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association. She is actually uh, creating a league for women to, to play professional hockey. Um, she is someone who uh, I'm excited to get to know as much as you all. So our three guests, um, Matthew, Matthew, and Gigi. Gigi, you want to say hello? Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. Like Matt was saying, I was watching last week, and so it's fun to fun to be on and I kind of feel like I need a football like I got to rep my Chris Carter old school Vikings jersey to be a part of this conversation here yes Chris Carter that will be okay you know he's old <laughs> none of us really were playing against him I don't know if you want to bring any current Vikings into this huh? uh, I'm old enough that I played against Chris <laughs> Carter <laughs> there you go Gigi um let's start with you so um this is your off season like like the rest of us um, how is training going with you? Are you able to get on the ice at all? What's, what's kind of different with you right now? No ice. I'm here in Boston like you guys. And so everything's been on lockdown for a, way, a while now. Um, so the workouts are in the living room, out in the backyard, using the trees, um, the cement blocks we have outside the rocks. And so it's, you got to be creative, but um, it's enjoyable. And 
Um, it's nice to be outside, you know, at least I, I know my family back in Minnesota, it's pretty cold still where I'm from. And so I'm grateful that I can still go outside and train. Also, can, can you take us back a little bit, um, you know, for, for me and for us of us as football players, we haven't had the chance to go and represent our country in the Olympics. I think that that is something really incredible um, and something that I wish I had the opportunity to do. Uh, can you just briefly tell us what that experience was like? Uh, it's amazing. I don't even think we've been asked that question so many times yet. I think we fail finding the words to appropriately communicate how amazing it is. It's a dream that all of us have had and it's, there's such sacrifice. It's not just, even though people see 19 Marvin and see Gigi on the ice, it's, it's my parents, it's my coaches, it's uh, tons of neighbors and teammates and everyone that kept me where I was. And so it's really cool because once you get there, it's a massive celebration of so much more than just even your tiny little group. I mean, uh, we, after the Olympics, we would come home, we'd be in Virginia. I didn't know Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, these people, they're loving hockey. They watch the game. They were telling us they're so excited about watching it. And so you see all these non-traditional hockey markets and it doesn't matter if it's hockey or not, it's you're part of team USA. And so they're cheering for you. And so it's very humbling, uh, incredible, kind of all the um, emotions, but for me personally, being a believer of Jesus Christ, it really hit me being walking the parade of nations, the opening ceremonies and just being like, wow, like the nations, because how often does the Lord talk about that? Like, let's spread the, the word to all the nations of all the earth. And so I think even as a believer, it's even more significant because you're like surrounded by multiple languages and just, um, yeah, very profound for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so those, those teammates, do you still keep in touch with any of those teammates that you have? I know you, you've, you've played since then, obviously, but there had to be a special bond that was there. Yeah, absolutely. I think I was just actually just got the phone the other day with Kendall Coyne, who also has a football connection. Her husband, Michael, plays um, in the, in, uh, in his, well, with the Chargers in the past and the Broncos. But yeah, um, Annie Schlepper is a great friend. Nicole, like uh, so many teammates that it's very easy to just pick up the phone. And especially when February, every time February rolls around, it's Olympic month, right? And so you get to relive all these experiences that you had with your teammates all over again. Um, Matt Hasselbeck, um, you know, you played for several years, as we talked about before. And now you're kind of on a different team. You are on ESPN. You're, you're one of ESPN's broadcasters. Uh, what's this time been like for you? I'm watching ESPN like the rest of us are, and we see no live sports in any events. Um, it's all replays. Um, has that affected you any? Yeah, well, first off, I can be Matt today, and we'll let Matthew Slater be Matthew, cool. if, if you want to do that. Right. He's got far <laughs> many more. He's got a lot more Pro Bowls than me, so I'll give him Matthew me too. today. Probably both of us combined. <laughs> Maybe oh. all of us can buy. <laughs> uh, no, listen, I think I don't think there's really anybody that hasn't been affected by this. It's uh, it's been really remarkable. And I think probably the, the thing that I've had to check myself, not only just with TV and sports, with professional sports and college sports, March Madness is gone. The spring lacrosse season, which my kids are all into for the NCAA, that's gone. Um, you know, like even for our own kids, all their sports seasons are gone. So, you know, you read all the time about, you know, uh, don't create other idols. Well, like almost if, like if I'm being really honest, like I feel like we've had to kind of check ourselves that maybe some of these sports, the ones we were playing in or watching or quote unquote, I'm calling it work. I was getting ready for the draft. I was getting ready to down to go down to Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Uh, April 9th for Tua's Pro Day. I mean, I was getting ready for Tua's Pro Day. We were going to go to Nashville and watch uh, my good friend Trent Dilfer, who's working out Tua now, getting ready for his Pro Day, and I'm calling that work. And then I was so disappointed when, you know, we were told to, um, you know, social distance and stay away, and those things started getting canceled. So it's been very unique, but it's also been a good uh, reality check in terms of you know, what is most important and, uh, you know, what are you putting first in your life? And that's been a, a little bit of a learning thing for us right now. Um, you mentioned your kids and, and two of them are in high school. They have scholarships to play lacrosse in College of BC, your alma mater. Um, it has to be very disappointing for them, as you alluded to. What's been your message to them? Because a lot of people watching this, a lot of players watching this, coaches, parents are kind of suffering through the same thing right now with um, so much work that they've 
put into something to seem to be totally wiped out or for naught. Yeah, they, I mean, they've done a great job of keeping everything in perspective, but uh, it is difficult for, in particular, for my oldest daughter. She's class of 2020. This is her senior year. Uh, things like the prom and your season, senior season. Uh, she's the captain of, of the lacrosse team. And, you know, they were working so hard getting ready for this season. And now it looks like they may not even have a season or if they do, it'll be abbreviated. And so it's been, that's been as a parent, that's something that, you know, we've had to navigate, but I think navigating it together. And I think probably the solution is really just kind of uh, broadening your focus a little bit and just seeing, um the world you know seeing the entire the entire globe and what people are suffering through but I, I i do have to give my kids a lot of credit whether it's remote learning or being away from their friends and their teachers or their coaches uh they've done a really good job of it and uh are dealing with it but uh but it's a challenge for those for those seniors i know espn is doing this thing Hashtag senior night, Scott Van Pelt on Sports Center late at night was kind of highlighting some of the seniors that didn't get sort of this uh, send off that they might have been hoping for. So there's things that I think the sports community can come together and maybe take people's minds off of all the negative and maybe just, um, you know, focus on some positive things and some uplifting stories in the process. Definitely, definitely. Um, Slate, the other Matthew that we're going to call Matthew, I call you Slate. Um, Talk to me a little bit about, about your training right now. You uh, are still playing. You're still going strong. Uh, obviously, the NFL has pushed back the date to which players can come for the offseason program. I mean, it's possible that there will be no offseason program. Um, how has that affected you, and what are you doing in lieu of going to the facility and working out there? Well, you know, Benjamin, I think uh, for me and a lot of my teammates, it's just been a day-by-day -day approach. Um, there's obviously a lot of uncertainty surrounding us and uh, the future of football and you mentioned the the offseason uh, none of us know what's going to happen where we feel like we're hearing one thing one day and another thing the next so what I've done is taken to Amazon and, and ordered a few apparatuses around the house and I have some stuff set up all over the house um, the kids have turned into human weights so sometimes willingly willingly sometimes unwillingly uh, I, I hoist them up and, uh, you know, put them to work. Uh, but it's it's been really neat. And, and you try to get as creative as possible. Certainly there's some things for me as an older athlete that I wish I did have. Um, but my wife's been really tremendous in, in helping facilitate, you know, different treatment things and uh, different regimens here at home. So it's been a time to get creative. Um, it's been a time to, I think, bring things back into perspective that maybe have shifted out of focus um so all in all i think you know as, as challenging as it has been uh from an athletic standpoint um i think there's still a lot to be thankful for when you consider the time at home and getting the kids involved and even my wife being involved it really it really really feels like a family affair definitely um along those lines we we got a question coming in over social media uh from a young man named jet in charlotte north carolina um, he's 10 years old, and uh, we've got a video of, of the question. If you guys want to roll that video. Were you able to hear it? You know, I was not able to hear that, but if, if I, I do have a transcript, I actually have a transcript okay, perfect, uh, perfect. for young Jed. He said that he's disappointed that his football season got canceled. And he's wondering if it disappointed you that you can't work out with your teammates this spring. Well, Jet, um, that is a great question. I can certainly understand you being disappointed, um, especially when you have excitement um, surrounding, you know, the beginning of a football season. And I'm sure you've prepared and, Looking forward to being with your friends. I can understand that. Uh, you know, I, I know that when I think about my football season um, and missing training and potentially missing an off season, I don't know that I'd say I'm disappointed. Um, I think right now, as is the case with all of us, uh, I'm concerned for our world and I'm concerned about the health of everyone, not only in, in the U.S., but around the world. And I think, you know, for me, football 
has to take a, a back seat, and, and I mean a way back seat right now. Um, certainly, thinking of what you, you know, what what takes up my thinking now are, are ways that we can be praying for people, ways that we can be supporting people, um, ways that I can be supporting my family and praying for them and serving them, um, and just you know praying that God sees us through this time. And uh, you know, if if He wants me or anyone else to return to football, I know it'll be there uh, in His timing. But right now. I think just, you know, you want to pray for our world and uh, pray that God gives us wisdom and discernment and peace as we navigate such an uncertain time. Yeah, a lot of sport is, is what we do, is what we look for all of us. We put our livelihoods into sports since we were your age, Jet. Um, you know, working out, running around on the, play, on the playground, then playing sports in school. And so sports has always been something for all of us that we really poured ourselves into. So to not be able to have it is definitely devastating. Um, Gigi, uh, I'd like you to talk a little bit about um, identity. Um, Matt hit on it a little bit, but he talked about, you know, our identity being in our sport. Can you talk about um, just how important it is for us not to have our total identity and joy in our occupation and also how difficult, at least I'll speak for myself, how difficult that is really to, to live that even though we say that as believers. Very difficult to live it. I think, uh, especially in this time, like we all have, um, can't go to the rink, can't um, play with your teammates, can't do what the gift and excel in the gift that God has given. And so I think being in a world and especially a culture that is so performance driven and earning um, it, it's a stretch and I know my heart um, and God is really teaching us that again reminding us in a deeper way like Gigi just like all these kids and everyone on this call like you aren't what you do um, you're so much more than that and it's not even about what you do whether good or bad it's literally not about what you do it's what I did on the cross and that's such a simple but profound thing that I feel like constantly needs to come up in my heart of um, for it is not by or first by grace that you've been saved, not works, not of yourself. And so I think as an athlete, I know I can get caught up sometimes and, oh, that was a great move I made, or that was a great performance, or man, like, I wonder what my coaches think about me as you try to um, cement your spot on the team, or um, what does the media say? And I think um, not being able to go and realize that as all these avenues are kind of shut off, and you're not able to even seek that out, the Lord has really shown up and reminding, I know me of, you know, it's really not about what you do. It's not about what people say about you. It's not about whether, you know, your game got streamed to hundreds of thousands of people or not. It's about who you are in Christ and you're already um, set apart, you know? And so I think it's extremely challenging. It's that tension, right? That we all live in because we, we want to be the best and use it, our gifts to honor the Lord, but there's still sometimes that motivation that wants to please us or earn our way into experiencing grace. But I think in this time for me, especially it's more, you know, as everything shut down, it's as if God's rising up bigger, if that makes sense. Like reminding me in a deeper way that it's really not about what you do, whether it's good or whether it's bad. It's, that's not, that's not it. I'm it, you know, being Jesus, what I did on the cross is the center of who you are. How do you, how do you reset though? Um, you know, because we all, many of us understand that. Some of us maybe don't, but th there are times, at least in my life, when just like you said, there's that tension there, and then you get to a place where you uh, you remind yourself of that. But then things get better, and things are going along, and there's and there's no coronavirus, and you're back to what you're doing. How do you maintain that that perspective? How do you maintain that that posture throughout your life? I think for me, a big thing has been um, like accountability and friendship, um, I think. And um, just having a weekly group meeting with my friends where you just get to talk about the real things and re recognize that and, and getting into scripture. I mean, first and foremost, yes, it's scripture, um, because the more I read and am reminded, like in First Corinthians, it talks about, you know, the value of each person and how, you know, an eye is not more valuable than an ear or a toe and how they're all needed. And so I think just, again, that humbles me and reminds me who I am, whether I'm thinking I'm, so, I'm really good or whether I'm like super disappointed and I'm set with myself. Like, and so I guess I would say the centered on the word and staying um, and reading truth, reminding me that and grounding, but then also 
having friends who constantly remind, especially being here in Boston, not many people understand the game of hockey. So they, they don't even like, I truly am seen for just a, an individual, not my accomplishments, which is so refreshing, but um, just being in that constant discipleship and accountability and reminder of to test my motivations and my inner heart attitude that helps a lot. Um, so I'd say, yeah, word centered and then having believers around you to encourage you and remind you. Uh, Matt, um, Gigi mentioned a passage of scripture. Is there any um, passage of scripture either right now or in the past in your, in your life at home or, or on the field that has really helped you and motivated you or, or maybe even just shook you um, to remind you about your importance as a person, as a believer, not simply as a quarterback or a broadcaster? Yeah, for sure. And I loved her answers. There were so many things. I actually wanted to grab my pen and start taking notes. But uh, I mean, Psalm 119 jumps out from her answer. You know, your word is a lamp into my feet. And that's the first starting point. My wife was telling me the other day we were talking and she said, you know, it's amazing how many times in scripture when someone would ask Jesus a question, what would he do? Boom, he would answer with scripture. And that's Jesus. So if Jesus is immersed in the word like that, I mean, uh, we're trying to be like him. There you go. There's your answer. Uh, you know, get in the playbook, so to speak. But I also was just caught about that whole, the whole thing that she was saying. And this happens sometimes when, during your playing career, when things are going well versus when things aren't going well, maybe you're winning or maybe you're uh, starting or not starting. And I've heard, Benjamin, I've heard you say this at the Increase Conference many times to our football family, guys, you are Christians who are having a football experience. You're not football players who happen to be having a Christian experience. And that's really the mindset. So to, to answer your question, I think of uh, Isaiah 55, where so many times in my athletic career, I had it all perfectly pinned out. Okay, here's how it's going to go. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, and we're going to win the Super Bowl, and we're going to retire here, and blah, blah, blah. And uh, Isaiah 55 is essentially is – telling us, hey, listen, whatever your plans are for your life, uh, whatever your ideas are, they're nothing compared to what my plans are and what my ideas are for your life. And that really, you know, in a sense was my, a little bit of my story. I, was, I played in Seattle for 10 years. It was the greatest experience of my life. It was like, my kids were born there. We loved Seattle. We wanted to retire in Seattle. We wanted to win a Super Bowl and ride off into the sunset. That did not happen. Um, basically what ended up happening is I moved on to Nashville and played a couple years there. I played three years in Indianapolis. And even though I would have much rather finished it out in Seattle, I cannot, and my family, we cannot imagine our lives without the relationships and the experiences, the friendships, the growth, the learning, all the stuff that happened in Nashville, in Indy. And some of it was hard. Some of it wasn't easy. But again, I just go back to that Isaiah 55, like if I would have planned it my way, it would have been smooth sailing and it would have looked completely different and it would have been nowhere near as fruitful, rewarding and uh, just really amazing. I can't, 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 say, can't say it enough, really. Yeah. Uh, Slate, um, same thing for you. Is there, is there a passage or a, a verse that you would like to um, impart upon everyone that has kind of encouraged you? Certainly there are a number of them, but there's a prayer that I, that I pray every, every day at a Psalm 51 um, and David in Psalm 51, obviously was coming before the Lord and um, he was in a posture of repentance. Um, and he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And I think, you know, that's my prayer every day. Um, you know, my heart uh, tends to stray sometimes. It tends to you mentioned the identity piece. It, it, it becomes a little too rooted in football and who I am as a football player, or it hears the call of the world and my heart tends to stray away. Um, so I just pray that the Lord would cultivate and renew uh, my heart daily uh, and, and as well as my spirit, that he would align my spirit uh, with what he wants for my life, uh, with what his will is, not what I want, but what he would want. So Certainly, you know, I find myself, you mentioned that tension. I know Gigi mentioned that tension. I think we all find ourselves in that place of tension where, you know, as athletes, uh, the world can offer you so much. And sometimes you believe 
uh, what the world tells you you are, tells you that you need. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need God's Holy Spirit to come into your life, uh, restore you, renew you, refocus you, and put you back on the right path. So I literally have to pray that pray, prayer every day I get up. Um, I've been praying a lot more here lately as I spend more time with my three kids daily. Uh, but, but certainly um, it's something that I lean on and am so thankful for God's faithfulness in that area of my life. As we uh, get ready to, to close out another huddle up, is there, uh, what would be, um, Slate, what, what would be your, your message to a coach? Um, what would you have a coach say to his athletes right now, specifically at this time, specifically with everything that's going on, um, the fact that we're having to watch each other on Zoom, uh, which I didn't even know how to work Zoom until this whole thing happened. Uh, how could a coach, how could a parent speak directly into the lives of their athletes right now? I think that's a great question. And there's just so much uncertainty right, that we're facing right now, right? There's just so much, um, so many questions and so much doubt and a fear for a lot of people. Uh, the one word that, that keeps coming back into my mind over and over again is faith. And, you know, faith can be simple in a lot of ways, but it's so complex. Um, reading a devotional earlier this week, talking about faith. Do we really have faith that God is in control? Do we really have faith that, that God is who he says he is? No matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on around us, when everything seems to be in utter chaos, do we have enough faith to stand on the promises of God's word, to trust him, and to really, really believe in our hearts that he's in control? And the reality is, for a lot of people, this is going to be a tough time. For a lot of people, they may experience loss and hurt and in and, and a lot of different ways more than just physical it could be you know financially on the job you know at home stress but do you have enough faith at this time to just trust God to believe that he is who he says he is and certainly if you don't I would I would encourage people to pray and ask God to give you that faith because uh, he will be faithful to give you that faith um, and I know during this time for me I've had to lean on that faith I've had to put my trust and identity in who God is. And I believe at this time of great uncertainty um, that he will prevail and that he is in control. Well, the Bible talks a lot about faith. And um, Matthew, Matt, Gigi, I just want to thank you for taking your time um, to share with us, uh, taking time out of your day to encourage all of us. Um, I think that you know the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. And, and while we're here on this call and we're speaking to people around this country and in other countries around the globe, um, we're encouraging each other. And you know the Bible talks about, Gigi, you mentioned, the Bible talks about you know, the body of Christ and the fact that we all have a specific role to play. Um, maybe you all are, are listening right now, wherever you are. And as Matthew, as Slate was talking about faith or um, as Gigi was talking or as Matt was talking, you're kind of wondering what this whole thing is about. And then maybe some of you know Jesus, you know Christ, and you are simply being stronger every day um, in your faith and you're in your word every day and you are ministering to your teammates or, or you're a coach that's ministering to other coaches. We're all in different roles. But for those of you that don't know Jesus, now is the time. So now is the day of salvation. There's no time like the present. No, the Bible says that, that faith is the, is the assurance of things hoped for. It's being certain of what we do not see. And the way we're certain of what we do not see is when we are through repentance and faith, when we have a relationship with the God who made us. The Bible says that God loves us. He loves you and me. John 3, 16 says it. For God so loved the world. He loved all of us. But he couldn't be with us. He couldn't have a relationship with us because of sin. When sin entered the world in the Garden of Eden, it separated us from him. A holy God can't be with sin. And a holy God must punish sin. And that punishment has to be the shedding of blood. So God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. Jesus came. He lived a perfect life. He was fully God, fully man. He shed his blood so that you and I don't have to. He paid a debt that we couldn't pay. And why did he pay that debt? Because God loved you so much that he needed to redeem you to himself. And the only way to do that was somebody had to pay the price that a holy God demands. That sounds horrible, it is. But the good news is that Jesus rose again three days later. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's alive. And because he rose, we will too. And because he rose, we can have a relationship 
with the God who made us. So today or tonight, if you're in another area of the world, wherever you are, it's very simple. It's repentance and faith. You don't have to make yourself good. You don't have to get rid of all the bad stuff in your life. You don't have to read the Bible all the way through before God loves you enough to have a relationship with you. It's not about all that. It's about what Jesus did for you. It's about a penalty that you couldn't pay, that he paid on your behalf. It's kind of like, you know, we talk about our kids and we talk about them going to school and maybe you're in school right now. Maybe you had a test before school was out and you got a 98 on that test and that wasn't perfect. And you got another 98 on that test and that wasn't perfect. And you got a 95 on that test and that wasn't perfect. You can never do anything perfect, but someone came and did a hundred on that test. They lived a perfect life. They did what you could not do so that you could have what you don't deserve. There's no perfect words. It's really about the condition of your heart. But the Bible says, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. That's a promise. And God always keeps his promises. So as we close, um, we're going to pray. Um, I'm going to pray a prayer that you don't have to repeat verbatim. You say it however you want to say it. But it's about the condition of your heart. The words of the prayer don't save you. We look throughout scripture. It's never really the words. It's a condition of a man or woman or boy or girl's heart. So let's pray. Lord God, I pray for those who are listening. And Lord, we are all four of us, God. We, we pray for those who are struggling right now. We pray for those who um, are fearful. Lord, we pray for those who are, are worried and are scared and um, Lord, don't know what's going to happen next. Lord, none of us do, but you do. But Lord, most importantly, we all have souls. We all have a spirit that's going to live forever. We were created to live forever, God. And for those who want to know you, Lord, I pray that they pray something like this, that they simply say, Lord, I'm a sinner. My deeds, my thoughts, my actions, my nature that I was born with separates me from you. Lord, the only way that I can be made right with you. The only way I can have my sins forgiven is if I put my faith and trust in your son, Jesus, who lived a perfect life and shed his blood on Calvary for me. He washed away my sins. He cleaned me up to make me perfect in your eyes. Lord, when you look at me, you will see his blood and not my mistakes. Lord, from this point on, I want you to be Lord of my life. Lord, I want to grab hold of your promises that eternal life begins now when this happens, when I pass from death into life, knowing you and also spending eternity with you when I leave this earth. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your love and your sacrifice. Amen. If you pray that prayer or if you do that tonight or whenever you do that, the Bible says you pass from death into life. And if you've done that, we want to know. If you have a huddle leader, let them know. If your parents are sitting with you, let them know. If you're a parent, turn around and tell your kids. If you're a coach, whatever. But if you could text huddle up to 46322, text huddle up one word, you see it on your screen to 46322. We just want to know, we just want to encourage you uh, in your new walk and we want to kind of come around you as a community. Um, we've talked about the community, the accountability that it takes to be good athletes. We talked about the accountability that it takes to walk the Christian walk. It wasn't meant to be walked alone. The men, women you see on this screen, we've all had people that have poured into our life at different times. It wasn't all done by ourselves. And God, God puts people in your life to encourage you, to challenge you, to equip you, and also for you to challenge and to equip on the other side of it. There's also some resources that we want to be involved with. Um, you can go to the FCA website. You can go to Sports Spectrum website uh, for different videos of athletes just like us who are telling our stories of faith. Um, most of all, and it was said by all three of our guests today, the importance of getting in God's word. Your word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. God's word is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. God's word is how we understand the truth of what God thinks about us and who he is. It's like food for the athlete. It's our spiritual food that we need to eat daily. So thank you for joining us for this Huddle Up. We'll be back next Wednesday uh, for another Huddle Up. Uh, between now and then, uh, take care. God bless. And um, we'll see you next week.